So back to our old paper here. The fry rag. A groom, 59 inches long for the system. And then the rest of this is dumped because we did not do that. Went with a whole nother plan with the two by 12. Which the main reason why we went with the two by 12 instead of something different. So if you look here between, I already had this built from a system at the old house, thankfully. But I will run through here and tell you how I built all this too. Just hang in and I'll tell you. But anyways, back to this. So this is gonna be my shelf. So be like that instead of this. If I had built a rack like this and then put plywood over it, I wouldn't have much space in between here. So I'm gonna try to do it like this. And hopefully that two by 12 has enough dexterity to hold it up for years because you build it to last. And we're also gonna put a sump system on this. So first thing first, let's grab our beautiful legs here. And as far as the leg length, Pretty much went with the base like that. Figured out the gap for my sump. And measured the rest of that. Which ended up giving me a nice total of 83. Got pile holes drilled in the legs. As you can see, we got the screws in. I'll explain the screw choice as we set it up. Legs are prepped and ready. And now time to build the square. Now to get the pieces for the square platform, we're gonna set a sump on. Which usually I do the square first, but I just happened to grab the legs and they both go together and got to get built at some time. Hand to screw and pile a hole and always remember to try to keep it as straight as possible. And luckily I remembered not to drill these two because we're going to double up the square on the bottom for stability you'll see here. Alright so I got my front and back and then I got two side pieces and also those so. And the side pieces, I've got these at 13. Cause you got an inch and a half, inch and a half, that's three, that's gonna be 16 plus inch and a half, inch and a half, which is three on three plus 16, that's gonna be 19. And if you know, you know, it's gonna hold a 75 gallon. And always when you're drilling into stuff, make sure, make sure to get this stuff off so you have a nice tight fit. Luckily I got magic fingers. Those are cleaned up. Now I'm trying to pick my better pieces here. I like to put the better pieces on the outside. Probably will never see it, but I feel better about it. Especially the crummy ones, you can always put in the middle and hide them. We're not gonna worry about that side. We're just gonna start on this. You don't have to do all that fancy square and stuff. As long as you cut it straight and your measurements are on, just make sure you flush it at the front and plumb it at the top. Let it's sitting right. It's gonna hold right there, nice and even. Sometimes you gotta back out, make sure it doesn't push itself. Give it a good squeeze. Back it out, put it back in. Hold in and out. Boom. No level yet. No square, no level yet. Hit this in. Do the same thing, flush and plumb. So as you can see, I didn't really do much there. I just grabbed it because I know how it flows. If you're subscribed, you know I've done this a couple times. Now, once again, flush plumb, work my way around and it will square itself out naturally. Now, if you're getting paid by hour, maybe you want to be using a square because you know it turns money, right? Not that I would do that. I wouldn't do that. I'd rather hurry home to the family instead. Next step is to get the middle side pieces in here. Wherever they might go. We're gonna need a tape measure for this. Cause we're gonna end up putting a 75. So we got 59 minus 48. That leaves us with 11. So we divide that in half. That's gonna be 10 and a half on each side. So this is 59. And a 75 is 48, which leaves a gap of 11 divided in half. It's gonna be five and a half. So we'll measure five and a half and mark each side. And since our two by four is one and a half, we need five and a half. We need to go half of that two by four. So that gives us three quarters. So five and a half, three quarters, that'll give us six and a quarter we'll need for the center mark. That's where our screw's gonna go. And if you always wanna check your work, and put the tape measure up. The reason why I got it over a little bit because that's how it's truly gonna sit. So, 48 over just a little bit there. 
the center. Boom. That's where the 75 is going to sit. Pilot hold make life easier. I'm gonna screw these in. I'm gonna use these cheaper machine screws because these don't offer any support or anything. Well, these don't really have any tension support, I should say. These deck screws, it's all about that shear value. These guys don't have to worry about it. Flat platform. Same with that. Probably could have, but probably could have used these on here being a bottom one. But being a base, good to have a strong on the outside. And always make sure it's pulling on top here. That way it doesn't bow on the tank and on the top. Also, if you look here, you see how the screw did not go in all the way. It's buttered up on the bottom, but not the top because the factory edge just wasn't straight. Not a big deal. I could have tightened that up all the way, but then it would have lifted this up and it would have made the board all wobbly. So I backed it out a little bit and I'm gonna leave it like this because it ain't gonna matter. Since it's gonna be on the ground. Got some pilot holes drilled in down the board here. You can see only halfway through, not on the other side. Use the machine screws for this one too. And the reason why I got two holes over here is just to keep it flat and flush. Cause if I don't go top and bottom, I'm gonna have a gap either at the top or bottom. Not that it would matter a whole lot, it just looks better when it's all nice and tight. Vacuum up, get the debris out of the way. And get it vacuumed up, get debris out of the way. That way it's nice and flat. Because once again, we're going to want our best size. Ooh, that one is not it. Ooh, a little better, but we'll put that in the back. Zoinks. And we want it nice and flat so we can get this flushed and plumb as always. So let's get and go to the corner. I just like to make sure that both corners butt up against each other. It takes two hands. Really smooth it out, make sure the measurement's right when you do that. And then that flush plumb, screw it in. And voila, our square is built. Time to get the legs on. Now we get our first leg. So we got three inch screws here. If you're going into the deep wood, you want longer screws. Three inch is good. If you're going in two two by fours, you're gonna want a two and a half. So first thing to do, go ahead and flush this up at the front. Pop one in. Doesn't really matter which one. Get the big level. Make sure it's good to go. Usually it is. So you barely even have to move it. And boom, legs in. Now work your way around. And if for some reason, it, and it just wants to keep going with something while you hit another screw. It's going at an angle here. That way you'll dodge it. I'm sure it matter. Now I realized I just screwed up because these front legs do not need to be in the front. Because this is not 12. Where I'm putting up top of here, it's not gonna work. So I could either cry about spilt milk or I just do what I need to do. And let's move these out. Cause, which ain't the best cause I'm gonna have holes in there. We could always fill it in with caulk later if I don't bother. I beat myself up about it cause that will not get me anywhere. That's a lesson. You just gotta keep on keeping on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now you can measure it with the tape measure, but I'm actually, I'm just gonna use a scrap piece here. It's my favorite to do because that way you know, because that way you know you're right on the money. You kind of flush it up back there. And what I want, to be on the front edge of this. So you can kind of see where I'm going with it. And the leftover holes really aren't that big. Not a big deal. They are dirty holes though. Boom. Now the legs are where I need them. So next thing left, moving up. Which now that I think about it, I can't remember how much space I left between there. Usually I leave 30 inches, but I may have done something different. So I'm actually gonna work my way from the top down. 
That way, whatever is left over will be left over. The only problem with that right now is it's almost two o'clock in the morning. I'm gonna need Sarah's help because there's no way I'm gonna be able to do this next step by myself, especially starting up top. If I was starting at the bottom, yeah, maybe because I could leverage things, but just trying to hold a solid two by 12 up that that's that long over your head and drill at the same time is asking for trouble. So I guess we'll work on this 75 gallon rack, which will be a whole nother video. If you guys like these rack build videos, subscribe. You can see that one, you can see that one, you can see this one, and those that I'm building. And more to come, and more to come, and more to come, and more to come, and more to come. I like tanks. And you know it's getting late whenever you're trying to just rush projects going through the motions because it's screwed up. I'm gonna go and get my plumbing in. Guess I gotta move that leg back. Which just brings me to a good point. Although I messed up a few times, I got the base of things. And as long as I got the base of things, the minor fixes should not be too much of a worry. You can always work that stuff out. Like when it, when it comes to construction, a real boss especially with new employees. He has, usually has, get the base of the work done and then comes in and cleans up all the little mess. So I guess I gotta clean up my own mess. So I'm just gonna take that leg and butt it up against this one. Could have probably used a two by eight, but still would have been more expensive than, than the two by fours because I'm getting these at 4.98. All right, there we go. I wanted to leave some gap in here. That way I could fit that pipe through here. I should still be able to fit that. Big reason why I don't get the tanks in for the racks yet. Makes good shelves while I'm building. Eventually I'll load all these racks up. I got them waiting in storage. All right, it's late. I gotta take a break from building this fry rack over here. Boom, 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 boom. Cause I'm gonna need help putting it together. So we're gonna jump in to building these. 75 that are gonna go into the walls here. Did the video for the sideways 55 you saw there. Let me know in the comments down below if I should go ahead and make the video for this as well. Since it's a lot like oh the 55 Lord. gallon and build. And looking at our paper, we got a 75G times two. We gotta mod this. Back to the fry rack. And when we get our boards up here, we're gonna want our distance which we got a two and a half here, which to make our lives easier, we'll go ahead and mark on these boards. That way we know where to line it up. And go ahead and do all sides. And I need Lady LRV's help, because there's no way I'm holding this big old board up above my head by this, myself and trying to screw it in on one side. So as always, get my burrs off here. We got a nice flat finish. And we're gonna go with the three inch deck screw on this. All right, got the top board up. Now we gotta figure out where to put the rest with this. All right, so I got the plumbing in here and we'll run through this real quick. So, we got three quarter PVC schedule 40. Ran it the length. Capped it. Teed it up where I needed to, had the main, main uptake. And then that's for excess if I ever want to drain it out or something. Got these from Jimco. As you can see here. They give you a little tap that you can buy to turn these into screws. So you actually just screw this in. And I put a little air hose on here so the water can go through. So this will pump water up and through will be my circulation from the sump. And then I use this stuff here to help hang with, keep that up. So what we can do now, since I already had this made, I have to use this as a template. We're gonna get the rest of the shelving boards up here. It's not the easiest, but about the best way to custom fit it because there's no other room otherwise. And yeah, just drilling it right where the shelf will be. Oh, I can hang these on there. But of course, if you're building it from scratch, you can customize it the way you want. Good old tape measure. Use it. And our approach is to screw these in and then we'll level them that way, that way. 
and can figure out where this needs to go. One side in, screw the next. Oh. And here we get the big level, level it out, then drill where we need to here. Screw. Yeah. All right, now I got those shells on here. Get it moved over where we need it. Really? Stripped oh, wow. up. And of course, plywood top for the bottom here. Nice and snug. And if you want to know more about where this water line comes in and how I did this, you can check out this video, YouTube search. Now that we got that all up, we're not quite done yet. We got to work on the outflow system, the place where all this water can flow outward back into a tank, which I wish I could use three inch, but we're going to go with two inch, three inches, like twice the price is two inch. This will be good enough. But if I had money to just blow, I would have went with the three. Because the center of this is actually one and a half, which is perfect for three, plus it would sit just right. But since we gotta raise it a little, I did paint some extra boards here. 59, which we can line up here, put it in the back. And then screw that down. All right, those back boards are all screwed in now. Gives it that height I needed. So this is the container we'll be using. See, we just gotta drill a hole in there and put them on in. So I cut me a few two inch pipe, give me an inch off each side. That way I'll be able to glue it into this. And I also got this nice clean out cap too. That way if I ever want to get in there, I need to get in there for some odd reason. Out of curiosity. Now that I got these outflows cut. Measuring my up and down, which I'm just putting my fittings in, give myself this space in between to get that and that to connect and work my way down. That way I can connect all my T's. Well, with the way that the pipe lays, these don't go back far enough. So, so I had to move the two by four out on this edge. That's right in the center. A little modification, we're getting there. Sometimes you gotta work your way through things. All right, those are set back, all fixed. Got this mocked up. Mind that noise too, I'm charging the golf cart. Got that thing fixed. Finally, mocking this up here. That way I can get my measurement, how it's gonna sit. As you can see, I got it sitting on that. That way it has somewhat of a slope. I probably will go ahead and put something like a shim underneath here just to raise it a little bit too. Not sure what I'm gonna put there. I am gonna raise it a little bit so it falls. And now that I got these in here, get a marker, set it around, show me where I need to go. And this can be my template for the rest of them since they're all even. Mark my cap in, that way I know which end is which. I also like to hide the writing underneath. And instead of big circles, it was easier just to line up the middle dots here. All right, time to drill these. This is a bigger tip. Pretty much already tell, I'm gonna have to pile up. Make my life easier. That way I'm not slipping in a slide. Always gotta test it. Nice and flat. Now I go ahead and check my holes, make sure that they're the bird. That way they don't fall through later on. Of course, clean it all out. Get it all swept up. Now that I got these all drilled out, I go ahead and start gluing, priming. Got my three T's here, my one corner for my four. I got my end pieces here so I can clean out. And since this is custom, I pre measured my in betweens here just to make it easier because when you can put your in betweens, that's what I mean is the pieces that go in between, have that all together as one, then you can kind of put it in together. Makes life easier trying to plumb it over there together. The sub part will do that separately, the part that goes in the tank. Now that I'm going through the process, I do think it'll be easy to attach those. Put those more attached there. All right, fits like a glove and I actually just rolled this in like that. It went right in, I didn't even have to move those. This is straight where it needs to be. I think I'm gonna go ahead and clean the rest of the containers before I put the other pipes in, just so I know it sits where it needs to set and it can all line up where it needs to line up. 
make sure they don't think it'll matter because this has got to be straight and then I could always adjust these. And I am going to go ahead and strap these on with this plastic hanger strap. It's a lot better than the metal. The metal you cut yourself with, especially if you're hanging lights, I like to use the plastic. And get them all strapped in. No way they don't go anywhere. All right, all right, got that all glued in there. Strapped in, it's gotta get down to the sump. Get these cap pieces on, put some plumber's tape on those. I like start from the uh, bottom, work my way up. <sighs> nice to get that done. Now these caps weren't necessary. You could use regular caps. And with my other ones, I never really needed them. But if a fish does get in there or I want to clean it out sometime, it would be nice to have the options. So that's why I did that. Oh, oh slowly but surely getting there. And really with the plumbing finished back here, I think we're good to set it back. Finally, in a space. Oh, I gotta fix that. Because that sticks out way too far. This is a relief valve for the pump water if it's pumping too much needs relieved back down. What I need to do is cut. I need to cut that down a little bit and then reroute it. I should reroute it down this down this way. All right, I got my corners in here. I'm gonna make my way down into the tank. Found my center area. This is my template for a tank. Got my relief valve. Oh, fudge, I forgot to put the valve on. Okay, now I got my pump relief valve in here. And the piping that goes all the way down, cornered in to where the tank's gonna be. Boom, ready. Can finally push it back, get tank on. All right, tank's been washed, rinsed. And the tank's in. And boom, containers are in. So I got my pipe that'll go down to the pump. Pump it up and through. Relief valve if I need it. Right there, and then the actual drain, the big one. So I'm gonna work on this first. Get sand in, get tops on. That way we can get the pump, get the water matured, and we'll be ready. And then throw some 20s in here. All right, finally got a pump for that. Since the other one didn't work, got the adapter here, boom, boom. Pump is in. Fit the cut. I'm gonna cut the fit. All plugged in. And propped up down below. Panagar is already loving it. Clean out a couple more containers and then we're gonna fire this bad boy up. And as you can see here, it took me a while to get back to that project. Just cause there are so many other things that needed space before that. But what's gonna go back here on this wall is gonna make that system look like child's play. Cleaned up and ready to go. All right, they're all in here. Pumps in, moment of truth. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh. That's the auxiliary. Go ahead and shut this. Hope that open that up if I uh, get too much pressure. Looks like it's filling up pretty good. These must not be open. Some flowing more than others, but it's a lot of fine tuning now. Looks like everything's doing good. I haven't seen any major issues so far. All right, I'm gonna fine tune these. All right, looking good so far. And some water, since it's all dispersed up here. So you can see some still filling up, trying to catch up. And it took almost all 75 gallons to fill this. And 75 gallon aquarium. All right, they're all filled up. Water line's still low. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this and let that all run out. And then I'll see how much is left. And then we'll top up. 
Now that those are all full and it's not running means that the overflow is drained off. I can fill it up now without having to worry about if the pump goes out, it overflowing. Plus I'm just gonna use this to turn the water because I prefer not to hear pumps in my fish room. And this is what it looks like now. Got some sand mixed in with some Eco Complete, some Sagittaria, bunch of coral blue platies. Tons and tons of them. Them things have been breeding like crazy. I need to get some of them on the website. If you're interested, let me know. A little shrimp. Another type of crip back there. Trying to grow some stems. They ain't growing very well. I think that's a rotaya of some sort. There's the pentagars. And as far as up here in this first row, I'm just trying to salvage a bunch of baby bull bitas, gelatis. Still a lot of space to be putting things in here. I do got some Achille fish. Blue Glorious really showing off there for you. We got another guy down here, but he's hiding. He's camera shy. He don't want to move out of his new home. Also got some guppy fry in this one. This is the micro Picta picta fry. And besides that, all the rest is just ready to either put in males or females and get them ready to breed. And or some killies or babies or whatever. I can put all kinds of stuff in here. So this will be really handy for my collectoritis and just needing a tank for this, that, and the other. That saves a lot of space. Now, these containers. These are the containers I was using. And here's their information. Now, I know these aren't that easy to get, but if you try a little ingenuity, I mean, there are things like certain containers you can put in out overflows and whatnot. Like, if you were to just cut this out here, boom, that's an automatic overflow right there from that picture, you know? So, there are other ways you could do it, but if you want to get those, you can try to hit those guys up. And for the overflow, I just cut foam and put them in the back there. That way, nothing can get through. And for the tops I've got here, Actually drilled two holes. That way I can change up the flow. I can direct it if it gets shorter. Give it some looseness if I need to. It gives me more wiggle room. Then it helps oxygenate and breathe. But as far as the material on this is a polycarbonate twin wall. Of course that thing's upside down. But it's a sheet, four by eight, you can get them. I use a box knife to cut it and then just regular drill to drill through it. Mark it where you need to. Pretty easy peasy for aquarium tops. Not the cheapest, but it's nice. And keep in mind, if you use one of these tops in a no filter setup that goes all the way up, then you can suffocate if you don't let any oxygenation get through. Tank's got to be able to breathe. If not, then it has a potential of suffocating it out because the atmospheric exchange is important for these filterless tanks. All right, well, that does it for the fry rack system. If you like this kind of content, stay tuned because we've got a lot of tanks and fish stuff going on in here since I have built that. So thank you all for watching.